Hi students, welcome to Year 12 Biology and Module 5 Heredity. This particular video is number 6 and it's going to conclude the, this little series we've been looking at in uh, methods of reproduction in different organisms and this video focuses on protists. So what we're going to do for the last time, I guess, at least for a little while, is um, to explain some of the mechanisms of reproduction by analyzing sexual and asexual methods of reproduction in different organisms. And for this one, we're going to look at this unusual group called the protists with two methods that they use in particular, binary fission and budding. Now, I hope as you've been going through these videos that you realize that there's a limited number of different types of strategies. Obviously, there's a huge range of different organisms, but there's a limited number of strategies. And so once we've got a bit of a handle on the way that different types of organisms reproduce, then it's looking at some of the specifics about the differences as opposed to the actual mechanisms themselves. So in this case, we're looking at protist reproduction. We're looking specifically at binary fission and budding. And again, trying to see if we can determine efficacy. How successful have this particular group been with these strategies? Are they sort of roughly 50-50 or there is, is there a difference in the strategies that are chosen and why these particular strategies and not more sexual reproduction, for example? So let's have a look at this group. The protists are an unusual group and in some ways are more defined by what they're not than what they are. So we do know that they are eukaryotic but we also know that there are three very significant groups of eukaryotic organisms, the plants, the animals, and the fungi. And basically, if you fit into one of those three groups, then uh, you're not a protist. So if you don't fit into one of those three groups and you do have eukaryotic cells, then you are a protist. So this is really like looking at a lot of single-celled organisms. There are some multi-celled organisms, uh, such as kelps, uh, algae can be one of those groups that's a little bit tricky. Is it a plant or uh, is it a eukaryotic cell, like a, so therefore a protist? Um, one of the important things, uh, I guess a distinction if you're looking at between protists and some of these more complex organisms, is while some of them are multicellular, they don't tend to be, um, I, I guess, what we might call multi-tissue, multi-organ. So they don't have lots of specialised tissues organized in the more complex way that we see typical of uh, plants and animals, for example. As a result, most protists are microscopic and single-celled, and they tend to live in moist environments. So they're actually aquatic organisms, or if they're terrestrial, then they tend to live in environments where it's fairly moist. Because they are such... Uh, uh, not necessarily simple, I guess if you're comparing them to prokaryotic organisms, they're more complex than them, but they are uh, minimal in terms of their cellular organisation and therefore um, they do often need that fluid medium, that liquid medium to move around in. So let's have a look at these two methods that this particular group of organisms use for reproduction. So one example of an uh, a protist that carries out binary fission is Spirogyra or Spirogyra, depending on how you prefer to pronounce it. Okay, you can see the green nature of this particular organism suggests the presence of chloroplasts and therefore um, the ability to photosynthesize. Um, binary fission, we've talked about a couple of times now, is just mitotic division. It's the parent cell becoming daughter cells. So one of the important differences, I guess, between binary fission and things like budding is that the parent cell disappears. It, it kind of, it doesn't continue living, although it technically does in the, in the um, uh, part of its daughters, uh, but it doesn't die either, I guess, in that sense. And it's not going to ultimately do that. Whereas uh, a species, for example, that may be involved in budding is something that may eventually um, go through its processes and die. Only a small part of the cell um, is lost, if you like, is uh, used to produce a new individual. So that's, I guess, one of the contrasts between uh, binary fission and budding. We get this pinching into two um, separate parts or separate halves. There are certain types of protists that are involved in multi-divisions, um, but we won't worry about them at the moment. Maybe something to have a bit of a look at later on. Um, but this sort of pinching into two halves is again another difference between binary fission and budding. 
in that we have in binary fission that split from a single parent into two equal daughter cells, but in budding we have usually a smaller cell that's budding off the main, uh, the main cell. Another difference when we compare um, binary fission in protists to bacteria, for example, is the time frame. So we said for bacteria they can reproduce in about 20 minutes. For, um, for protists, it'd be hours in optimal conditions and that could stretch out to um, multiple days uh, in less than optimum conditions. So the process isn't a, a rapid one in the way that it is with um, uh, prokaryotes like bacteria. And also what that means is that they aren't as quick at uh, colonization or rapid population growth as their prokaryotic cousins. Nevertheless, the processes of binary fission are similar, and the way that we talk about a single cell splitting into two cells after the copying or the replication of the genetic material is the same, and so therefore there's some consistency in what it is that we look at. And I guess it's probably fair to say that as far as protests are concerned, binary fission is by far the preferred method of reproduction. There's much higher incidence of binary fission amongst protests than there is budding. That being said, budding does occur. Uh, the difference here is that we get a new identical cell from the parent, but of course the parent uh, continues to survive and ultimately may go through its life cycle and die. That's slightly different, as I mentioned before, to the process that we see in binary fission. Usually it's the outside of the cell from which it detaches, so you get that sort of pinching off from the main cell and the new cells that are produced through buds can live independently or they can form colonies. So we do find some colonial examples of uh, protists. One of the, again, the main differences or something that we look at in terms of binary fission is this unequal division of the cytoplasm. So it's not being equally split between the two cells. Only a small portion of that is going into the bud that's going to develop into the new individual. A cellar. Um, is one example of a protist that does undergo budding. This kind of brings us to a bit of an end to our um, look at a range of different reproductive strategies, but not quite. One of the things that we do need to do and we'll look at in the next video is to focus on human reproduction in a little bit more detail and to have a look at some of the important cycles, particularly those that are under hormonal control that contribute to the next generation of humans but we'll do that in a future video. Thanks for watching.